all know I love a good Sims challenge, and the Sims team made an official shell challenge this week. A shell challenge is where you build a weird box shell of a building and then put it on the gallery blank, and then people have to download it and try and turn it into a real finish build. Often when I host these, I try and make the shape really weird on purpose and include some little things that you have to work around. Just to give you an example, this was the last shell challenge that I did, so it's literally just a box. And the rules for these are pretty simple. You can take this and turn it into literally anything. The only thing you can't do is move or change the existing walls. You can add interior walls, you can rotate the lot, you can put it on a different kind of lot, you can literally do anything except change the walls that are already there. And I love doing shell challenges, so when I saw The Sims make an official one, I was like, okay, yeah, we have to do this for a video. The challenge is posted in their official Discord server, which I know is kind of scary. It's not as bad in there now as it was when the server first released. When it first came out, they did a terrible job of modding it. Trust me, I know, because I was being repeatedly harassed. I'm laughing about it now, but it like actually wasn't funny at the time. They were like telling me to die and the mods in the server didn't do anything about it. But anyway, they did post the challenge here, so there's more information in the Discord server. It's just discord.gg forward slash the sims if you're looking for it. I'm not planning on like posting mine in the Discord server. I, I just want to do the challenge for fun. Oh my god. Okay, this is the shell. It's on Agent Shawnee's account on the gallery. It's the Modern Madness shell. Um, this is a little bit worse than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to do with this. Normally, I put like fancy funky walls and bump outs on my shells on purpose to give you like some visual interest to start with. This one's just a big old giant box. Literally just a big- oh my god, it looks like a duck. <laughs> Wait, it literally looks like a rubber duck. Like if you told me it was meant to be a duck on purpose, I would believe you. I'm not doing that though. I'm gonna make a real build. <laughs> I'm not gonna make a duck build. I'm thinking that I might rotate it around this direction and maybe we could make it into some sort of like art center, museum, like maybe a library even. It could be an interesting library. I'm also gonna change the wall height to be medium instead of tall. That's allowed in my shell challenge rules. I don't know if it's allowed in this ones, but they didn't say, so I'm just gonna go by my rules that I do when I host them. And in my rules, you're also allowed to have platforms and half walls and stuff. I sort of think of half walls as being like fences. They're not really like walls, so I think that they're fair game. So I'm picturing that maybe there could be a huge huge wall of windows, sort of like right there. And then I might try and add a bump out of some sort. And this is what we're gonna use so that we can have like a covered entryway into the building. Same thing in my shell challenge rules, you're allowed to add like flat rooms. You just can't add walls. So this is fair game too. In eco lifestyle, is there a medium wall height version of that giant fence? Oh, there is. Okay, I'm wondering if we can use that to make this look more intentional. Oh my god, it actually looks really bad. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay, it's fine. It's totally fine, everyone. It's gonna be fine. I think that we need to like build that out. I feel like it needs to come out a little bit more so it looks like it's on purpose. Maybe there could be a cover on top of it. This could end up being like a really nice cool balcony for the top floor. Oh my god. I know I'm only just starting, but this might be one of the worst shells I have ever attempted. I think it's because it's not really laid out in a way that is helpful. <laughs> like it's kind of just there this big giant building, and that's not very easy to work with. I do think what I've done so far is a good starting point. Like, we've kind of tried to make the building have a little bit more shape, even if it doesn't actually have any shape. I have no idea what to do with the back. That we're gonna have to think about more. Imagine there's like a little door right here underneath this, and then this becomes like an upstairs balcony space. I know we said library originally, but I don't know if this really has library energy. I mean, maybe like museum energy even. One thing I always say is when in doubt, cover it with trees. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do now, I'm kind of digging for like a little planter of some sort. I'm gonna save myself a couple extra of these in case I want to use them again around elsewhere. But these are like little concrete planters, which is good. And then I can use these huge trees. Obviously, I'm gonna want to like scoot them over, <laughs> kind of space them out a little bit more. And then I always like to rotate them so I can try and make it seem like it's not the same tree three times. Obviously, it is but you can do what you can to make it seem like it's not. And that covers almost the entire front of the building, which sounds like it's bad, but it's not. That's what we need. <laughs> we want it to cover almost the entire front of the building. We are in fact intentionally hiding this stuff. 
<laughs> that is the goal. Okay, so I'm thinking, since this is sort of open, I'm wondering if we can put like grass in this section, or at least in part of it. There could maybe be some more covered space there, but this could be like a cute little kids playground space, or maybe it could just be like an indoor garden. But that gives some nice covered outdoor areas for your Sims. Growing Together has two really nice big signs that we can use as well. These might be helpful with us picking a color scheme, but I think we could put that right up there close to the front of the building. The other one looks like this, which kind of, maybe that matches better because it has like the, the lines. But I don't know, I kind of want to have something to split it up. All right, I've been putting off adding more windows long enough. I think we need to get some like right there. And then the front door, I always struggle a lot with front doors for community lots because I always feel like they look too much. <laughs> I struggle a lot with what's best. Honestly, these doors might be okay. We can get some nice lights or something on either side, that'll help too. <laughs> oh, that is clipping in the house. That's bad. Okay, so on the inside of this place, I know we're gonna wanna do probably a huge staircase. I am picturing something kinda like this because I like the idea of opening the staircase up to the downstairs. It's really not as big as you would think it is on the interior either. Like it looks so huge, but there's not that much space. <laughs> I also have no idea where to put the extra staircases. Like this place is laid out so bad. I'm gonna leave a bunch of it open too. I really do think that looks nicer, having there be like big open sections. I haven't decided if it's a library or a museum or what. I know I probably should have picked that already, but I, I'm still not sure. <laughs> I know it's gonna be something, I just don't know what yet. <laughs> oh, you know what might be good for this part? Because we want this to be big and open, almost like a community space. Should I get a big sliding door? Of course, the sliding doors don't fit on medium walls. They're too short. That looks silly to me, with it being that short. <laughs> I want it to be tall and fill the whole wall. Okay, so just upon first glance, I'm feeling like we're gonna need to do something kind of like what I put in the front down here. I don't love that that's partially in front of the staircase, but it does look kind of cool going up the wall, so maybe it's fine. I do like these horizontal slats. I, I'm trying really hard to make the walls look less like a big blank flat wall by adding in stuff like this. Now, obviously it is a big blank flat wall, but I'm kind of trying to take steps here to pretend that it's not. <laughs> Should the slat wall continue over to fill in this little corner? Oh. Maybe that's fine. Maybe that helps it all to like blend in and, and come together. I do like some of these big window sections. I think if it's gonna be a library, we're gonna have to try really hard to fit in bookshelves. And I haven't really prepared myself for that yet. So just something to think about. We must begin to consider the possibilities there. I don't hate this. I really don't hate this. I think that it's coming together a lot better than I expected it to. Is this even a good lot size for this? Like, I feel like it looks kind of weird here. We have so much extra space in the back. Let me try and move it somewhere and see if we can get something better out of it. Actually, there's a 40 by 20 lot in Growing Together's world. Oh, I don't know if it's gonna fit here. <laughs> I, I thought maybe it would, but actually I'm not sure. Oh, it's close. <laughs> it's very, very close. Okay, never mind. I'll go back. I want to have my landscaping. The other option is the 30 by 30 in Newcrest, but I don't know if it'll fit there either. Oh, it actually fits a lot better here. Oh, okay. That makes me feel way better about this. It has less of a big chunk of space on the back of the lot. <laughs> I'm okay with having some big spaces of concrete in the back, but I don't want to have a ton. So that's an improvement. The lighting on this lot is worse. So that is the opposite of an improvement. Okay, I put a couple extra trees there. So there's kind of trees around a few of the sides. And I like the idea of a head Edge fence. Even if it's just in a couple spaces, I think it might be kind of nice to sort of close off parts of the back of the lot. Okay, already having a patio with like actual stone makes a huge difference. <laughs> having something like that out here is way better. I don't really love that particular texture is, is mostly my issue. This one always works fine too. It's just simple concrete slabs. You know what's really funny is we're basically almost done. <laughs> like I don't know how much more I'm gonna put on the exterior. Obviously we have to furnish the whole thing still, but exterior wise, we're getting there. I love putting these signs kind of around the sides of the building. I feel like that helps make it look like a real community space. I like to use a sort of gravel texture on flat roofs like this, so I'll probably start there. I hate that color. <laughs> this one's more gray, and I think gray is good because we have like the gray accents in the sign. Because this part's a balcony, I'll put tile there maybe, and I might do some similar tile on the inside. Oh. 
no, that looks bad. I might swap it to like a more interesting pattern though. Okay, well the goal with this part was for it to be like greenhouse energy. I was planning on putting a bunch of plants in there and then putting actual planter boxes peppered around between them. It is quite dark which is not really great, but I guess we kind of have to make do. Does this vibe even make sense? Like, is this even a good idea? I think it is. I think it's cool to have some planter boxes and it'll get light, it's open air. The, the light shines through, sort of, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Okay, inside the actual building, I was thinking about using a very light colored wood for most of the flooring. I also had this vision that right here would be like the reception desk so we can get a cute computer for the employee. I'm all of a sudden using Home Chef Hustle cabinets, which I didn't really think I was gonna do, but it's happening. And they should be able to walk underneath the stairs to get to it. And if they can't get to it, then I don't think that's really a problem because there's no such thing as a receptionist in The Sims 4. <laughs> it's all pretend. And I don't really want random Sims to be sitting here using this computer. It's mostly just there for decoration, so I think it's okay if they can't get to it. This right here will be where the bathrooms go. I don't think I can fit two toilet stalls. <laughs> oh, I guess if they're scooted into the wall, you can. I think it's fine like that. Okay, I'm putting some paper towels on the wall. We have a trash can. It might be good to have a changing table too, because this is a community lot. So we can put that there just on the wall. The trash can's not slotted to it, but I don't like how it looks because it puts it so far off the wall. So I'm just not gonna slot it. Okay, other things that are necessary for a library. I was actually kind of considering using these high school years bookshelves. Let me go through and grab a couple of options. So the high school years ones are good. The kids room stuff ones are also good. What if we made like the top floor into a kid's space? Oh, this could be really cool actually. Cause we can put a whole line of kids books up against the back wall. And then we can focus on like kids murals and, and kids toys and stuff up here. This play tent is absolutely enormous. Okay, I know that, but it's so useful. Your Sims can basically max skills in that thing. I'm thinking I'm also gonna want some kids desks. I don't really know what color is best to use. I do kind of like these with the wood. And then I had pictured myself using these chairs because they come in some kind of funky colors. We'll have to try and clutter these in a way that is still useful. And then we can put a couple of computers, maybe on like every other desk. I feel like we have to use these kind of fun chairs, right? I'll put a couple there so your Sims can sit and read. But then I kind of wanted to have like science tables or something. I don't know. I, I feel like this place is actually smaller than I thought it was. <laughs> that does tend to happen though, doesn't it? You get a little bit overconfident thinking, oh, I've got all the space in the world. And then once you start decorating, you're like, oh, I have a little bit less space than I realized. <laughs> I do think that having a couple arts and crafts tables would be really helpful too. I know there's not like a ton of toys in this space, which maybe is not ideal, but I'm kind of leaning more towards skill building than toys because you can have toys at home but in this space we can try and focus more on some of those big things that we don't normally have room for in our houses i'm kind of thinking that most of the walls will be quite plain in this building but we can do some interesting things like putting extra slats on the walls and trying to get some color accents okay so i painted all of the walls up here kind of a different color i want it to be slightly simple i don't want to overdo it with the furnishings do these things actually not slot in there how small does it have have to be to slot into that shelf. Okay, I think the upstairs is done though. I don't want to overdo it, so I'll leave it like that. We are gonna need a couple things like chess tables and stuff. I'm also wondering if it would be worth trying to switch this into a rec center. You do need a shower for it to be a rec center, a shower and workout equipment. So maybe that's not good. <laughs> maybe it's better as a library. I was just thinking that because it's so big, we could probably fit some of that, but I don't think it's worth it. I am actually gonna put some playground equipment outside though. I kind of like that idea. We can totally have that there. Can we fit the observatory. <laughs> <laughs> These are all very important questions that we must ask ourselves. The answer is yes. It just might not be worth it. I don't really want the accent colors to be blue outside, but there's blue on this thing and you can't change this to be other colors because those are terrible. So it might end up being blue on the outside. <laughs> I can't escape it. Everything I do is blue. Okay, in the past, I have gotten in big trouble for putting grills on my community lots like this. People are like, why is there a grill at the library? But I sort of picture this place as being like a community space. And I honestly don't think that having a grill in a community space like that is that weird. I'm also thinking functionally, like with your Sims, having a grill is so good because then sometimes strangers will cook for you. Okay, I just went through and filled the garden with a bunch of extra plants. So you can actually come here and get 
plants if you were using this lot. I don't know if that was a good idea, but I kind of like committing to the garden thing. I forgot about chess. I do need to put chess tables outside. I think I might put a couple of them in the front. Maybe those lined up outside are cool. I'm like clearly trying to convince myself as I'm saying it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, moving back inside for a second though, because we have to start thinking about bookshelves. I'm actually okay with using the same ones that I had in the kids' space. I just won't put the like fancy squares, like not that version, just the plain version. Okay, I really cannot tell if me just filling in all of the empty walls is good enough <laughs> for the library space. I think it might be close to good enough. Oh gosh, sorry, if it wasn't clear, I don't mean like I'm done. I just meant like for the number of books, not like it's good enough so we can just say the build is finished. That's not what I meant. Okay, here's what I'm thinking for the downstairs. I don't know if I should put computers on every single one of the desks or if I should just do it on four. There are a couple extra computers all the way upstairs. So that helps. I'm kind of trying to lay out some little files so it looks like people are using these computers. I feel like the whole downstairs being a computer workspace is good. And then you go up to get access to all of the books. Something I've always kind of wanted to do is make a really detailed library like this with like the bookshelves down the middle. That's not really giving us a lot of room to actually read, but I could put some chairs around. I could find us some space. We don't need to have the bookshelves everywhere. We can do them mostly like in the middle and then leave some space out here for chairs too. Column cannot be any taller. That's not true. I know I can use the giant column. That was really weird that it did that, but whatever. I'm gonna save because this is actually turning out better than I thought it would. I had really low expectations for this build, but I'm kind of liking how it's looking, which is a miracle. Seriously, when I saw that shell at first, I was like, oh no, <laughs> this is not gonna be good. But there's been a miracle and this has somehow turned out way better than I initially expected. I'm putting a couple just random loose chairs in the corners like this and then I'm thinking stuff like this like magazines on the wall, maybe some extra plants around the place. I don't know if there's much room for a big clock but we could put one like over there. I hate that door. Should I try something different? Like should I try and use this but make it into double doors? somehow. I actually like that even less, but I, I do like having a corner bookshelf right there. These are like inspirational posters. <laughs> I'm gonna try those on that wall. I don't really want to put too much else. I'm scared of it being too much. Okay, great. Those chairs are clipping by accident. That is actually really bad. Oh, that's better because the bookshelves are now like more central. And then we can put a couple sets of chairs like sort of in front of the windows so it's easy access. Okay, what if we did something like this then for the rest of the chairs? These are kind of close together, but these are like slightly comfier chairs. I wonder if I could put a divider in between them. That kind of matches the outside's energy. But then we have like sort of conversation areas if they wanted to sit and talk or read. And then they're a little bit more comfortable than the other chairs, but they're still the same color. Like they match really nicely. I am gonna use these inspirational photos again, but with a different swatch. I kind of like those things. They're quite weird, but in a fun way. Technically that's a finished library. We have like all of the things that we need. I have not painted the outside yet. So I do need to figure out something <laughs> to go on the outside. We have a lot of that kind of nice minty green color on the inside. So I might use a little bit of that from growing together in a couple places on the outside. So I'll put that paneling like right there. I guess on a lot of those big blank walls, I'll use that light green paneling. And then to be honest, I might want to put just blank white walls behind these things because I want the wall panels to stand out and I would like for it to look like this is one big window. I know that it doesn't, but that's kind of what I was going for when I was putting them there. Oh, maybe this is a little bit easier to paint than I thought. I always leave the wall paint to the last minute because because I hate doing it. <laughs> I feel like it always ruins it and I just, I don't know, I don't like doing the wallpaper, but that actually kind of came together a little easier than I thought it would. I'm now wondering about putting another set of bushes. Oh, and I have to paint all these half walls. I would have forgotten about that. It's actually a good thing I'm doing this because I did not paint any of the half walls. <laughs> I guess thinking about those bushes is like a way to add some more greenery and some more divide into the front because there's just a lot of big open space out here, which isn't really what I wanted. And then I guess I can scoot these over. That does make this trash can make more sense. Oh, we could do a bench. Could even be something kind of simple and almost a little bit ugly. <laughs> we could just do something like this. Never mind. I actually hate them, so I'm gonna change it again. I kind of like this one. I know that's very simple. That's actually from Snowy Escape, but it works really well. I'm going through and trying to paint these now so I don't forget about them. And then I think that the build might be done. This is way, way less bad than I expected it was gonna be. I know I keep saying that, but when I looked at that shell, I was like, we're doomed. 
<laughs> we are absolutely doomed. But somehow, I think we managed to make it look intentional and cool. I kind of like the weird greenhouse section. I think that was, oh, uh oh, oh, I almost didn't paint this wall. I think that was definitely the biggest wild card of the whole building, just because it was like this weird floating section that I, I didn't know what to do with. But I think what we did makes it look like it's on purpose. And I think that this is a really cool wall texture. So it worked out, sort of. <laughs> it all kind of worked out. I'm just gonna upload it to the gallery so I can stop looking at it because it's kind of starting to stress me out. I just called it the modern madness shell, which I know is not like the best title, but I figure it's easier to find this way. It does use quite a few packs. Yeah, only one kit though. What item from the- oh, that thing. Mostly expansion and, and game and stuff packs though, not too many. Mostly just expansion packs though. So I, I've done worse builds pack-wise. <laughs> and I haven't built a library in a while, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'd be curious to know if any of you try the Sims official shell challenge. Like I was saying, I know the Discord server, their Discord server in particular, is a little bit intimidating. <laughs> I think they scared a lot of us off by having it be so poorly moderated in the first couple of days, myself included, but I'm still glad I got a chance to try this shell. Anytime The Sims has an official challenge, I just cannot resist the urge to participate. I love a Sims challenge, and most times I make them up for myself, so it's fun when somebody else does it, especially when it's like The Sims team, you know? But on that note, I'm gonna end this video right here. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow, okay? Bye everybody. I also expected this to take me like six hours, and it only took me a couple hours, so I'm kind of impressed by that too.